Greetings to our viewers in North America and across the world. Welcome to the BAPS Charities Health Awareness Lectures. As many of you know, we're living in unprecedented times caused by the pandemic from this novel coronavirus. Through this entire pandemic, our medical professionals have worked tirelessly round the clock to support our communities. They've cared for our loved ones when they fell ill, all the while working round the clock to develop this vaccine for our protection. Today, we are gonna learn a bit more about this coronavirus vaccine, the safety, the efficacy of the vaccine through the lens of three experts that we have invited to our program. Let me begin by introducing our guest speakers on today's program. The first speaker, Dr. Pinky Putt. Dr. Putt is an infectious disease specialist she works at a large academic hospital in New Jersey. Her research currently focuses on COVID-19 and transplant infectious diseases. She has published her findings in well-respected, peer-reviewed scientific journals. She remains on the front line treating COVID-19 while continuing her research studying outcomes of COVID-19 infections. Thank you for being here this morning. My first question is about the vaccine. We know it's an mRNA vaccine and it sounds very novel. What is an mRNA vaccine? Can you shed some light on that? How is it different from the traditional vaccines that we've known? So messenger RNA or mRNA is actually one of the four COVID vaccines that have been developed or are being developed. And currently, there are two mRNA vaccines that are authorized to be used in the United States, Pfizer and Moderna. It contains RNA, which encodes an antigen, a particle that is seen on the virus. So when we get this vaccine, this RNA enters our cells and tells our cells to make this specific antigen. And then once the cell makes the antigen, our immune system sees this antigen and makes antibodies. And this is the antibody that we need to fight against the actual virus if we were to come across COVID-19. This technology makes it quicker to make in a large quantity. Now, on the other hand, the conventional or traditional vaccine requires growing the virus in a large batch. And the vaccine already has the antigen in it. You don't have to instruct the body to make the antigen in order to make the antibody. And so this whole process for the conventional traditional vaccines can actually take a lot longer, say months to make, compared to the mRNA vaccine. So the mRNA technology sounds like a new technology. Has this been used uh, in the past? Has it been used in any other capacities before? So this is the first time that mRNA vaccine has been licensed to be used in humans in the United States, but it's not really a new technology. Researchers have studied this mRNA vaccine for decades. Early stage clinical trials were used on other viruses like influenza, rabies, cytomegalovirus, Zika virus, and even for cancer tumor cells. But recent advancement in technology has actually made it more stable safe and more effective so that we could use this vaccine right now for COVID-19. Now you mentioned the influenza vaccine and I know in the influenza vaccine there is the egg-based and the non-egg-based and where does this mRNA stand with respect to that? I'm sure a lot of our viewers are going to be wondering and asking about that. So in this mRNA vaccine, no animal products like eggs or gelatin were used. Unlike traditional or other vaccines, it does not require growing the virus in a large batch, say as an X. Now, would you be able to help us and walk our viewers through the measures that are being taken to maximize the safety? Because uh, I'm sure there are viewers that are concerned about the rapidity with which the vaccines have been brought in into the market. Yeah, so these vaccines have actually gone through the same rigorous safety assessment as all vaccines before it's authorized for emergency use by the FDA in the United States. And they've also gone through large clinical trials and data review by Safety Monitoring Board to ensure that this vaccine is safe. Now, this is the first large-scale use of mRNA, so these studies will continue to collect data for the next two years to monitor potential side effects and effectiveness. 
it has actually gone through all the necessary steps that we need, just like other vaccines. And it was in a, made in a shorter time for multiple reasons. One, because it's an mRNA technology, which is not new. Scientists have worked on this for decades, and it has provided a foundation for it to be used for this specific vaccine. And number two, there has been more funding for this vaccine. And three, numerous scientists have worked around the clock to make this vaccine possible today. Now, going back to the mRNA part of the vaccine, the RNA sounds like a genetic component. Um, is there any possibility that the vaccine can affect an individual's genome? Uh, or should people be worried about any potential side effects? Yeah, the COVID-19 mRNA vaccine actually doesn't enter the nucleus of the cell. And that's where the DNA is kept. So it cannot affect our DNA in any way, nor can it alter any of our cells or genome. Now, remember, like I said earlier, this is not a live virus. So this vaccine cannot give you the actual COVID-19 infection after you receive this vaccine. What it does do is teach our body how to make an antibody, which is our immune system, just like any other vaccines. Keep in mind, it takes a few weeks for our body to form a complete immune response to this vaccine. So in between, it's possible to get infected with the actual virus if you do not follow the necessary precautions and get sick from that, not from the vaccine itself. And that's only because enough time was not given for your body to form protection. Binky Ben, thank you very much for all your expert insight today. Uh, this was, I'm sure, very helpful to a lot of our viewers. In closing, would you have any other comments or recommendations um, for our viewers, especially ones who may be hesitant in receiving the vaccine? I think what everyone needs to understand is that this mRNA COVID-19 vaccine technology is not new. It's been well known to scientists for decades. It has been worked on for previously for other viruses. And this vaccine has gone through vigorous testing in clinical trials and has proved that it's actually safe to use and effective against COVID-19 infection with minimal side effects. Now, scientists who developed it and the medical community feel very confident about these vaccines and strongly urge that everyone gets the vaccine to protect yourself from COVID-19, since we all know what kind of complications can come from having the infection itself. It's our duty to do our part and get this vaccine to not only protect ourselves, but others as well. Remember, we do not know if this vaccine prevents us from carrying the virus silently. So even after getting the vaccine, it's very important that everyone continues to wear a mask and practice social distancing as we are doing now until the pandemic is completely over. Dear viewers, Dr. Pinky Butt, we thank her for her time and expertise. Our next speaker is Dr. Mehul Sitar. Dr. Sitar is a member of the world-renowned Emory Vaccine Center the Emory Lab is in the forefront of research on how viruses such as Zika, Dengue, and coronaviruses cause diseases in humans. Dr. Suthar is an expert in emerging viruses, immunology, and vaccines, and has been featured in national news networks. Over the past eight months, his lab has played a critical role in studying the COVID-19 virus and is deeply involved in evaluating and developing vaccines. We just had a very insightful discussion with Dr. Pinky Putt about the mRNA part of the vaccine. Now we know there are a few different kinds of vaccines available for coronavirus. Would you be able to comment on the differences between these vaccines that are currently available to us? What is the uh, COVID-19 vaccine? SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes COVID-19. SARS-CoV-2 is spread through the air and it infects the cells within your lungs. And it does this by using the spike protein, which is found on the outside of SARS-CoV-2, to interact with proteins on the surface of cells within the lungs called the ACE2 receptor. Naturally, during an infection, SARS-CoV-2 will generate an antibody response. These antibodies work by neutralizing or blocking the ability of the spike protein to interact with the ACE2 receptor and infecting. The COVID-19 vaccines are designed to generate this antibody response very similar to what you'd find during a natural infection. In the United States, 
There are currently two COVID-19 vaccines that are approved for use in humans. The Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech vaccines use a message RNA platform to drive expression of the spike protein. And once you receive this vaccine, your body generates an antibody response to this spike and similar to a natural infection, will function to block this virus from infecting cells within the lungs. One of the major differences between the Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech vaccines is the schedule for interval between the first and second dose of the vaccine. With the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, the interval between the first and second dose is 21 days, and the interval between the first and second dose for the Moderna vaccine is 28 days. Thank you for uh, your guidance here. Would you be able to comment on how effective are these vaccines going to be at reducing the risk of exposure to sars cov 2 During the summer and fall of 2020, rigorous phase three clinical trials were conducted for both the Moderna and the Pfizer BioNTech vaccines. Both the Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech vaccines show remarkable efficacy in protecting against COVID-19 disease. Greater than 95% protection is achieved within 10 to 14 days after receiving the second dose of these vaccines. That is why it is critical to not only get the first dose of these vaccines, but also that second dose. Now, I, I'm sure a lot of our viewers will have this question. Does the vaccine help decrease the transmission of the virus? Should we continue to wear our face masks even after we get vaccinated? The phase three clinical trials conducted for both the Moderna and the Pfizer BioNTech vaccines were designed to answer the question of whether you are protected against COVID-19 disease, not whether you are protected against infection. There's no data of whether you are protected against infection uh, of this virus, as well as whether you are protected against transmitting this virus. Therefore, it's still very important to continue to wear masks, social distance, hand wash, and use hand sanitizer as needed and as recommended by the CDC. What if I've had COVID-19? Should I get vaccinated? I mean, if I've had prior exposure, would that confer resistance for any future infection? If you have already had COVID-19 in the past, yes, you should still get the vaccine. Several studies have shown that even if you've gotten COVID-19, the disease, or even been infected by the virus, you can generate an antibody response. However, these antibodies are highly variable between individuals. You don't know whether you have a low antibody response or high antibody response. Therefore, the FDA and the CDC have recommended that even if you've gotten the COVID-19 in the past, you should still get the vaccine. Now, would you be able to help us understand who should get vaccinated? Because obviously, as you know, our community has folks from all backgrounds and walks of life. If you are above the age of 16, you should get vaccinated. Currently, the CDC and the U.S. government have set forth guidelines and recommendations to prioritize healthcare workers, frontline workers, and individuals over the ages of 65. You should continually check with your local and state health departments of what the priority schedule is of when you can be vaccinated and continually check these to see when you are eligible for these vaccines. Mehul Bhai, what about the special category of folks such as immunocompromised, those who are pregnant, and what about children who are younger than age 18? What recommendations do we have at this time for vaccinating these individuals? The clinical trials that were conducted with these vaccines did not include individuals that are pregnant. There are currently studies underway to understand how these vaccines work in pregnant individuals. Regardless, both the CDC and the FDA have recommended that individuals that are pregnant can and should be vaccinated. Under the emergency use authorization for both the Moderna and the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, 
They have shown that children can also be vaccinated. For the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, the FDA recommended that children above the ages of 16 can receive the vaccine. And for the Moderna, children above the ages of 18 can receive the vaccine. From all these groups of people, are there individuals who may want to consider not receiving the vaccine? No. Individuals that are either immunocompromised or undergoing cancer treatment should still get the COVID-19 vaccine. Both the FDA and CDC have recommended that individuals undergoing chemotherapeutics, immunosuppressive, should still receive the COVID-19 vaccine. However, if you've had an allergic reaction to any of the components found within the mRNA vaccine, including polysorbate, you should consult your doctor prior to receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. What about folks who complete their vaccination protocol for the first time around? Would they need repeat vaccinations in the future? This is a fantastic question, and there are several studies underway to better understand the immunity to either the COVID-19 virus or vaccination. Currently, what we know from studies in natural infection, in other words, individuals that have been naturally infected by the virus, have shown that antibodies to the virus can last for at least up to eight months, if not nine months after infection. This is great news. Further studies are still needed to better understand how long these antibody responses last. If there is a waning in these antibodies, we may need to get vaccinated in the future again, but this is still underway. Mailbay, thank you very much for all of this. This was incredibly insightful. Would you have in closing any recommendations or comments or suggestions, especially for those who may be hesitant not receiving the vaccine? This COVID-19 pandemic has been a very challenging time for all of us, especially in the year 2020, and it's still gonna continue through 2021. In order to return to at least some level of normalcy, it is highly recommended that you get the COVID-19 vaccine through rigorous phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. These trials have shown very strong safety and efficacy profiles. We've shown that individuals that are young in, in their mid age, or if they're elderly, have strong antibody responses to these vaccines. If you are eligible for these vaccines, you should go and get it. Our third guest speaker is Dr. Janak Patel. Dr. Patel is the Director of Infection Control and Healthcare Epidemiology at the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston. He's also the Director of Pediatric Infectious Disease and Professor of Pediatrics. He joined UTMB in 1989 and has participated extensively in patient care, teaching, research, and administration. He currently serves as the Chair of COVID-19 Vaccination Preparedness Task Force at UTMB. Dr. Janak Bhai, our program is very good. હવે આ વેક્સિન સમાજ સુધી પહોંચાડવા માટે ઘણા બધા પ્રાયોરિટી ગ્રુપ્સનું આયોજન કર્યું છે તો આપ સહેજ માર્ગદર્શન આપો કે આ પ્રાયોરિટી ગ્રુપ્સનું આયોજન કઈ રીતે કર્યું છે આ વેક્સિન આપવા માટે સીડીસીએ ત્રણ ફેઝ બનાવ્યા છે ફેઝ વન જે જેમાં એના બીજા ત્રણ ભાગ છે ફેઝ વન એ બી અને સી એમાં હેલ્થ કેર વર્કર્સ હોય જે બધા હેલ્થ કેર સિસ્ટમને પણ સપોર્ટ કરતા હોય એ બધામાં આવી ગયા એ પહેલાં પહેલું ગ્રુપ જે અત્યારે ચાલુ થઈ ગયેલું છે પછી ફેઝ વન બી અને સી સીડીસીએ હમણાં જ ડિક્લેર કર્યા છે ડિસેમ્બરની એન્ડમાં પણ દરેક સ્ટેટે આમાંથી જુદી જુદી રીતે એને અપનાવ્યા છે ફેઝ વન બી અને સીમાં ઉંમરવાળા માણસો આવી ગયા જેમ કે પાંસઠ વર્ષથી ઉપરના હોય બીજા સોળથી પાંસઠ વર્ષ હોય પણ એમાં એમને બીજી હેલ્થ કન્ડિશન્સ હોય જેમ કે ડાયાબિટીસ વજન વધારે હોય કિડની ફેલિયર હોય ઇમ્યુન સપ્રેશન હોય કે કેન્સરને લીધે એવા ઘણા બીજા કારણો છે એ ગ્રુપ છે અને પછી બીજા ગ્રુપમાં એસેન્શિયલ બીજા વર્કર્સ આવી ગયા આમાં શું છે કે દરેક સ્ટેટ પોતપોતાનું નક્કી કરે છે કે ફેઝ વન બીમાં કોને પહેલાં બોલાવવા 
પછી ફેઝ ટુ આવે છે એમાં જે બધા લો રિસ્ક વાળા છે જે ફેઝ વન એ અને બીમાં ના હોય એટલે બાકીના બધા માણસો સ્ત્રીઓ પુરુષો બધા આવી ગયા ખાલી બાળકોનું અત્યારે નથી એ લોકોની પર રિસર્ચ ચાલી રહ્યું છે અને કદાચ ભવિષ્યમાં એ લોકોનું પણ વેક્સિનેશનમાં એમની દાખલ હાજરી થશે પછી ફેઝ થ્રી આવશે ફ્યુચરમાં જે આપણે રેગ્યુલર વેક્સિનેશન પોલિસી હોય જેમ કે દર સાલ એકાદ શોટ આપવાનો થાય એ અત્યારે નક્કી નથી પણ એને ફેઝ થ્રી કહેવાય છે આ વેક્સિન તો હવે સમાજના દરેક વ્યક્તિ સુધી પહોંચાડવા માટે સમય તો લાગશે તો કમ્યુનિટી ક્યારે આ એન્ટિસિપેટ કરી શકે કે વેક્સિન એમને મળે આ ટાઈમ ફ્રેમનું જરાક આપ માર્ગદર્શન આપો અત્યારે કમ્યુનિટીમાં વેક્સિન માટે ઘણી આતુરતા છે ઘણા લોકો રાહ જોઈને બેઠા છે હવે વેક્સિનેશન પ્રોગ્રામ તો ચાલુ થઈ ગયેલા છે પણ દરેક સ્ટેટમાં એની સગવડ અલગ અલગ છે ઘણી જગ્યાએ સિટી અને લોકલ ગવર્મેન્ટે પણ પોતાની ક્લિનિક ચાલુ કરી છે ઘણી હોસ્પિટલો અને પ્રાઇવેટ ડૉક્ટરોએ પણ ચાલુ કર્યા છે હવે આ સપ્લાય કોન્સ્ટન્ટ નથી અને અત્યારે હેલ્થકેર વર્કર પછી જે કમ્યુનિટીના હાઈ રિસ્ક પેશન્ટને બોલાવી રહ્યા છે એ લોકોને અત્યારે પ્રેફરન્સ આપવામાં આવે છે હવે આ બધી ફેસિલિટીઝ જ્યાં વેક્સિન આપી રહ્યા છે ત્યાં રજીસ્ટ્રેશન સિસ્ટમ પણ છે અને દરેક પોતપોતાની રજીસ્ટ્રેશન જુદી જુદી રીતે કરે છે પ્રાઇવેટ ડૉક્ટરની ઓફિસમાં તમારે નામ લખ્યાવાના હોય છે જ્યારે ગવર્મેન્ટ અને હોસ્પિટલના પ્રોગ્રામમાં એ લોકોની ઓનલાઈન રજીસ્ટ્રેશન સિસ્ટમ પણ હોય છે એટલે એવી કંઈ સેન્ટ્રલાઇઝ સિસ્ટમ નથી એમાં લોકોને ઘણી તકલીફ તો પડે જ છે શોધવામાં કે ક્યાં વેક્સિન છે ઘણી જગ્યાએ આજે વેક્સિન છે એને કાલે નથી એટલે એમાં ઘણી વાર રાહ પણ જોવી પડે હવે ધીમે ધીમે વેક્સિન સપ્લાય સુધરશે એમ જેમ જેમ આવશે એમ વધારે વેક્સિનની વ્યવસ્થા થશે અને લોકોને તો મળી રહેશે હવે દાખલા તરીકે મારે વેક્સિન માટે રજીસ્ટર થવું હોય તો કયા કયા સ્ટેપ્સ લેવા પડે જેથી હું રજીસ્ટર થઈ શકું અને મને વેક્સિન મળી શકે જેમ હમણાં મેં વાત કરી કે ત્રણ ફેઝીસ છે ફેઝ વન એ જે હેલ્થકેર વર્કર્સ માટે છે એ તો ચાલુ જ છે પછી ફેઝ વન બી અને સી જે હાઈ રિસ્ક પર્સન્સ છે જેમ ઉંમરવાળા છે અને જે ઉંમરવાળા નથી થોડાક યંગર છે એ લોકોના હાઈ રિસ્ક કન્ડિશન્સ હોય એ લોકોનું તો અત્યારે વેક્સિનેશન ચાલુ છે હવે એ ફેઝને પત્તા હજુ તો એકથી બે મહિના લાગે અને પછી જે બાકીના છે જે લો રિસ્કવાળા છે એ જે ફેઝ ટુ છે એ ત્યાર પછી ચાલુ થશે અત્યારે એવું લાગે છે કે ફેઝ ટુ ચાલુ થતા માર્ચ કે એપ્રિલ પણ થઈ શકે અને આ બધું વેક્સિનના સપ્લાય પર આધારિત છે વેક્સિન જેમ સમાજ સુધી પહોંચે કે વ્યક્તિ દીઠ સુધી પહોંચી જાય તો કદાચ સાઈડ ઇફેક્ટ પ્રોફાઇલ થઈ પણ હોઈ શકે તો આ સાઈડ ઇફેક્ટ પ્રોફાઇલ કે સેફ્ટી મેઝર્સ ટ્રેક કરવા માટે સરકારે કયા કયા પગલાં લીધા છે એનું આપ જરાક માર્ગદર્શન આપજો બીજી બે ત્રણ વ્યવસ્થા છે સેફ્ટી માટે અને તે તમને કંઈક પ્રોબ્લેમ હોય તો તમે ડૉક્ટરને પણ મળી શકો છો અને જણાવી શકો છો આપણે સેફ્ટી માટે ઘણું શીખી રહ્યા છે પણ અત્યાર સુધી સેફ્ટીનો પ્રોબ્લેમ મોટો છે જ નહીં સામાન્ય માણસને દુઃખે તાવ આવે દુર્જારી આવે માથું દુઃખે એ બધું થાય છે પણ આપણે બધું ચલાવી લેવાનું છે કારણ કે ફાયદા પહેલાં જોવાના છે અને સેફ્ટી એને જોડે કમ્પેર કરવાની છે ઝીરો પોઈન્ટ વન પરસેન્ટ એનાથી પણ ઓછા લોકોને સિરિયસ સેફ્ટીનો પ્રોબ્લેમ હોય છે એટલે નવ્વાણું ટકા નાઇન્ટી નાઇન પોઈન્ટ નાઇન પર્સન્ટને મેજર સેફ્ટીનો પ્રોબ્લેમ જ નથી આપણે એનો ઘણો અનુભવ વધી રહ્યો છે એટલે અત્યારે સેફ્ટી તો બરોબર છે અને બીજી કોઈ વસ્તુની ચિંતા નથી હવે દાખલા તરીકે મેં વેક્સિન લઈ લીધું તો વેક્સિન લીધા પછીથી હું કયા અનુભવનું અનુમાન કરી શકું કાં તો મારી જવાબદારી શું રહે છે એનું આપ જરાક માર્ગદર્શન આપો કોવિડ વેક્સિનનું લેવાનું મેઇન કારણ એ જ છે કે આપણે કોવિડથી માદા ના પડીએ તમે પહેલો ડોઝ લો તો તમને થોડોક એનો ફાયદો તો છે જ પણ બીજો બીજો ડોઝ લો ત્યાર પછી પંચાણું ટકા શક્યતા એ છે કે તમે કોવિડથી માદા ના પડો તો પણ વેક્સિન પછી તમારી જવાબદારી ઘણી છે તમારે જો માસ્કિંગ 
सोशल डिस्टन्सिंग एंड हेन्ड हाइजीन ए बधु चालूज रखा काम वगैरह फरवा जवा मोटी पार्टीओ में जवा ये बदी आप जवाबदारी हजू चालूज रखा है आशा है भविष्य में कि पंचोतेर थी एशी टका लोग वेक्सिन लई ले तो पी कोविड कोविड जैसे प्रमाण बहुत हाई है तो एकदम लो थी जाए तो वक्त कही सक आ बदा जे आप खास जे प्रिकॉशन्स लई रिया है तो अमर ओछा कर सकते पर हजू एन घो टाइम बाकी है हजू तो पांच छ महीना कदाच वर्ष सुधी पर आप चालू राखव पड़ से जनक भाई आप खूब खूब आभार आपनी महित आ बदी अतिशय अगत्य है और मैंने विश्वास है कि बदा दर्शकों ने आ उपयोगी जनाशे पर हजी कोई छूटा छवा आवा रहा हो जेने हजी हेजिटन्सी हो यार वेक्सिन लेव के ना लेव हजी मूंझण थी हो आपने कोई मार्गदर्शन है छे आप बहुत महत्व क्वेश्चन है जो आप पेन्डेमिक ने कंट्रोल में राखव हो तो पंचोतेर थी एशी टका लोग वेक्सिन ले पड़ से अब अत्य सर्वे में एवं जाना है कि वीस टका ने वेक्सिन जोईती ज नहीं बीजा वीस टका है एमने हजू नक्की नहीं कि ली के नहीं खाली साइठ टका लोग ने वेक्सिन अत्य ले हेजिटंट जो व्यक्ति है यनी घूम ध्यान आप जरूर है हमें मारी एटली विनंती है कि तब जो हेजिस्टंट हो तो राइट जगह थी पे इन्फॉर्मेशन लो पहलू मार एटू कहूँ है कि वेक्सिन जो बेजिक टेक्नोलॉजी है ये पंदर वर्ष थी एनी संशोधन थी रू पी क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स आ कोविड आए पी क्लिनिकल ट्रायल्स चालू कर अनुभव अपने नौ महीना थी बीजा सात मिलियन सेवन मिलियन अपने वेक्सिना डोज आप सकता है आप चूकिया है एट सेफ्टी घनी इन्फॉर्मेशन है आ वेक्सिन थी आप कोविड इलनेस है मादगी है पर रीते फायदो थे ये अपनी पास इन्फॉर्मेशन है बीजू के तेरे जो खास तमने आ वेक्सिन की साइड इफेक्ट की चिंता थती हो तो तब राइट जगह थे इन्फॉर्मेशन लो तब तरह डॉक्टर की जोड़ बात करो तब सी डी सी वेबसाइट पर जाओ अने त्या तब एनीरिजिनल इन्फॉर्मेशन जुओ मेरी ये विनंती है कि तब जो सोशल मीडिया में जो बदा पोस्टिंग्स होनी बहुत ध्यान न आपसो कारण के घा फेक न्यूज है एट राइट जगह थे तब इन्फॉर्मेशन लैजो डॉक्टर जनक भाई आपनों खूब खूब आभार तब जो महित आज आप खरेखर खूबज उपयोगी है तो प्रेक्षक मित्रों कोविड नाइंटीन विषय की केटली अगत्य महिति आज आप अपना एक्सपर्ट पैनल पास थी मेवी तो सारांश में आ एमआरएन ए टेक्नोलॉजी नवी नहीं आ वेक्सिन आप डीएनए में कोई फेर पड़ता नहीं आपने अत्य जे बे वेक्सिन उपलब्ध है तो बने पर खूबज ऊंडाणपूर्वक टेस्टिंग कर सलामती चकासणी खूब ऊंडाणपूर्वक कर तो अंत में आपने जय वेक्सिन लेवा वो आए तो जरूर थी वेक्सिन लेवा विचार करजोज हाँ विशेष अगत्य बाबत तो ये कि वेक्सिन लीधा पशी पर मस्क पहुँ सोशल डिस्टन्सिंग राखवा हाथनी स्वच्छता कहता कि हेन्ड हाइजीन जरूर चालू राखोज अमे आशा राखी छे कि आपने आ प्रोग्राम महिति सफर लगे हे वेक्सिन अंगे जायोगी लगी हे वेक्सिन बाबते महिति जम के रजिस्ट्रेशन के करव वेक्सिन उपलब्ध के अँ दर्शाल सी डी सी वेबसाइट पर प्राप्त होने आप कनेडियन प्रेक्षक मित्रों अँ दर्शाल हेल्थ कैनेडा वेबसाइट पर आज महिति प्राप्त कर सकते विशिष्ट स्थानिक महिति आपने स्टेट हेल्थ डिपार्टमेंट की वेबसाइट पर उपलब्ध हो वी कैनेडा में रहता अपना प्रेक्षक मित्रों 
स्थानिक माहिती प्रोविन्शियल हेल्थ डिपार्टमेंटनी वेबसाइट पर मेरी शकसे बीजी विशेष महिती आप प्राइमरी केर फिजिशियन पास थी प्राप्त कर सकीस सो डियर व्यूअर्स इन कंक्लूजन थैंक यू फॉर योर अटेन्शन एंड प्लीज रिमेम्बर वॉश योर हेन्ड्स कवर योर फेस एंड कीप सम स्पेस बी सेफ and thank you for watching the program